Hello, I'm Donna Rodriguez. Welcome to the Silver Lake Regional School Committee candidate interview. I want to take a moment to thank our candidate for participating in this interview and collaborating with PAC-TV to bring this informational programming to residents and voters this election season. Let me explain the format. We will be conducting a one-on-one -on -one interview style Q&A format with each candidate, lasting about 30 minutes. Responses will not be timed and follow-up questions may be asked during this format. We aim to ask up to four questions, but that will depend on the length of responses, along with any follow-up discussion during this exchange. Candidates will be allowed to address anything not covered or that they would like to add clarification to at the end of the interview in their closing remarks. Let's get started. Today we're speaking with Michael Chicane, one of the three candidates for the Silver Lake Regional School Committee in Kingston Town election. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Donna. Thanks for having me. Well, we're glad you can be part of this. And let's just jump right in with the first question. What do you believe is the role of a school committee member? Uh, I feel that, um, you know, before getting into this race, I wasn't really clear on what the school committee member's role was. Uh, but now I am uh, very clear on what the, uh, the duties of the school committee member is, you know, being involved with the the hiring of a superintendent, reviewing the budget, addressing policies for the district. Um, all of those items I feel are critical to making sure that we're moving forward um, in the school here. Um, you know, before getting into the race, there was a lot of um, a lot of area of ambiguity for myself. I wasn't sure, you know, is the school committee going to do um, you know certain tasks versus other tasks, where are they going to fall in? But speaking to current school members, uh, school committee members, I was able to get that clarity and uh, knowing where the school committee members, um, you know, fall into the, the role of moving, uh, you know, the, the various departments, uh, working with the staff, the faculty, and also uh, being an advocate for all of the families in the, in the community. Um, not only for uh, for Kingston, although that that's what this position is for for the Kingston, but also working with uh, the Plimpton and Halifax school committee members, making sure that whatever decisions we make is for the benefit of all three towns. Thank you. How do you view the role of committee members to balance the needs of their individual town with the needs of other towns within the district, particularly if the needs are not in line with one another, especially in regard to budget decisions? I think that's that's a very difficult uh, line to to you know make sure you don't cross and look at only your town's uh, needs. Uh, we need to make sure that both of um, Kingston's needs and uh, Halifax and Plimpton's needs are being addressed. Uh, it is difficult when we look at the the um, budget constraints for the various towns. Sometimes there might be shortfalls within various towns. I know um, for now there is a, a shortfall in one of the towns, but uh, we need to work together to make sure that uh, we're not leaving any of the students or any particular um, of the uh, any particular program behind. We want to make sure that everybody is propped up together and that might result in some cuts to um, other um, community um, programs within the Halifax or Kingston or Plimpton uh, programs. Um, wherever there is an opportunity to, uh, you know, to provide funding, uh, we should look at that and, and try to prop up the, the other uh, towns. Thank you. Due to the rising costs of attending college, many students are looking to join the trades after high school. What are your thoughts on growing and or expanding the CTA, CTE program to address this need? Uh, I am all for expanding the CTE program. Um, I know personally I have used them in years past. I've taken my car to the automotive uh, uh, portion where they've done my brakes uh, for um, the culinary uh, department. You know, their bread pudding was amazing when, <laughs> when we had it. So um, I am all for it. I think those are skills that really can't be taught in the you know, conventional classroom and are things that I feel that um, you know, the children need as they're getting older, you know, college might not be an option for everybody, you know, whether it's a two year or four year uh, college. And, you know, there are 
astronomical costs associated with attending a private institution. I've seen recently it was over $80,000 a year, which is you know out of reach for some, some family members. So having these skills to fall back on and, and make a career out of, a, a very well-paying career, you know, especially in the, the, the carpentry or, or automotive business, uh, I think is something that we need to promote, make sure that a lot of the, the students are aware of and, um, you know, try to bring as many um, additional students into it. Uh, you know, it is something that, like I said, is not taught in the conventional classroom. Um, so we need to make sure that everybody's aware of it, of these programs and, and um, of course, have the community involved try to get the experience out there for the students. Like I said, with you know the automotive uh, department, uh, making sure that all of the, the community members know that hey, they could bring their car in and get some, some minor repairs done. They could go pick up some food. Uh, they could get some light carpentry done. I see them around town. So um, it, it is a great program and I, and I feel like we need to continue to expand it as much as we can. Uh, do you have ideas on ways you would like to see it expanded? Um, I, I would think more disciplines would be great. Um, you know, just making sure we have carpentry, automotive, culinary, uh, I believe, um, you know, electrical and plumbing would be great. All of the trades would be, um, you know, something that we should look to expand, uh, if not already present. Uh, those are things that, you know, will give all of the, the students a leg up once they graduate high school from, you know, from Silver Lake High School. Uh, they could jump right in being an apprentice and, and you know, really make a good living there. Uh, I feel that the, these again are things that um, you know some students may not be um, you know looking forward to you know four years of college or two years of college because they would rather work with their hands. They you know they like building stuff. And there's different types of people out there. So I think we need to promote those types of of skills within our our student body. Thank you. How will you manage decision making when there's no simple, clear cut decision to be made, knowing that whatever you decide, some constituents are going to be disappointed or in complete disagreement? Uh, that, that's a, a difficult part of this, uh, this seat that I'm running for, especially, you know, being on the regional committee, uh, you'd have to deal with not only your own town, but also the other two towns, making sure that you can't make decisions that are just going to benefit your, your one town, you know, Kingston here. Uh, I think it's very important to make sure that all of the other uh, parties from, from the various towns or departments, whether it's in all within the same, um, you know, the high school and middle school, uh, that we all, all of them are brought to the table, so to speak, and to make sure that we all understand what our end goal is. Um, you know, if we lay out what we want to achieve at the end, I think it's a little easier to to go around, address where we need to make a little bit of, uh, of a cut here and there. And if everybody sees that everybody's making a little bit of a sacrifice, then I think it, it's, it's a little more palatable to, to, um, you know, to offer something up for the greater good of the, of the school community. Thank you. With the challenges of social media in today's world, how will you respond to or manage seeing debate on social media platforms where decisions are made by public employees are often discussed or criticized? Uh, you have to have a thick skin um, for that if, if it's about you or if it's about somebody you may know uh, or in, a, in another um, department. Um, I think, uh, you know, everybody wants to, um, you know, be more vocal on social media. And, um, you know, there's, there's not as much of a filter, I feel, uh, versus speaking to somebody in person, uh, which is something that, you know, unfortunately has, has been the trend for, for a number of years, uh, ever since the rise of social media. I think we need to, um, you know, be able to step away and not look at uh, social media as a way to defend policies or debate policies. Uh, or even uh, convey what types of way, um, you know, a department person is leaning. Um, you know, with with all of these positions within town, we need to make decisions based off of the facts, everything that's presented to us. And, um, you know, wh whatever the decision ends up being, based off of those facts, you can't please everybody. And you have to know that you're making the best decision for your constituents, for the student body, for faculty, for the staff, especially for, you know, on the, 
uh, regional school committee. Um, and, and you just need to you know, have the trust that you have made the right decision. So it is difficult. You have to have that thick skin, but um, I think it's it's doable if you're just, you know, you're sure you made the, the right decision based off of the facts. Thank you. Now, Michael, what you decide during your time on the school committee will affect the students of tomorrow. How far into the future do you look to see the impact you could make as a school committee member? Well, my, my children are currently at KES and KIS, so that's where I'm looking right now. I'm looking for the next five to ten years until um, they graduate from uh, Silver Lake High School. Um, I want to make sure that um, whatever uh, policies are implemented now will be there for the school to prosper in those years and beyond. Uh, I'm not looking for this to be a, a seat that I'm running for just for three years, but probably for the long term where I could see all of the changes being made if there are any changes that are needed. Uh, obviously, until I get in and um, you know, you know, if elected, uh, I want to make sure that you know all the decisions are made based off of what is presented. So, um, I, I want to make sure that you know for these next ten or so years, looking into the future, the school remains on a, a, a good path um, to be inclusive, to expand programs such as the CTE, as we mentioned, um, and that there are uh, new programs that are that may be. Um, you know, born uh, when my children end up going to uh, the middle school and eventually the high school. So th that's really the reason I'm running for this position, uh, knowing that my children in, in three or four years will be in the midst middle school uh, and will be able to, uh, you know, um, be part of something that if elected, I would have had a, a, you know, a hand in. Thank you so much. Now you're going to have a couple of minutes for closing remarks or to address anything that wasn't brought up that you'd like to speak to. Mm -hmm. Things such as, you know, telling viewers uh, a little bit more about you, um, but also things that you're particularly passionate <coughs> about when it comes to school committee. All right, thank you, Donna. Um, yes, um, you know, a little bit about myself for those who are not aware. Um, I did move to Kingston in 2016 with my wife, Erin, uh, where we decided to make a home here after wanting to be closer to family. Um, you. you know, my, my children, Andrew, who is nine at KIS, and Daniel, who's seven at KES, have had a, a wonderful time uh, so far at schools growing strong friendships. And uh, that is something that I saw on my nieces and nephew as they've worked through uh, the all of the, uh, the schools, the KES, KIS, the middle school and high school. They've grown strong bonds and relationships that have continued for years after their graduation. Um, you know, those those are the reasons why I'm running for this um, for this position. Uh, seeing that sense of community that the school has provided to them. Um, you know, ever since I, I moved here, I've tried to volunteer my time to try to be part of the community and of the schools, being a, um, a parent helper in the classroom, uh, a uh, KES library uh, volunteer, being on the board of trustees as a treasurer, treasurer for the Kingston Public Library, uh, and even coaching sports for my children on the weekend. So I try to be involved both academically and athletically uh, for for uh, my children and uh, a lot of the other children uh, in, in the community. Um, so I, I just enjoy giving back and I feel like this is a, a good opportunity to continue giving back to the community. Uh, professionally, I am a project manager uh, working on uh, employee benefits projects, trying to bring together a lot of different groups uh, something I feel that would be a benefit to this position with the various departments, the various town uh, representatives uh, comprising the regional uh, school committee. I think it's very important to be able to partner with others, uh, to be able to delegate uh, among the various departments and make sure that we're all working together towards a common goal. Um, you know, as mentioned, you know, we need to make sure that we're not leaving any town behind and, and any any program or group of students behind. And we need to ensure that we're all in this together. Uh, so I feel like, you know, all of my volunteer professional experience makes me an ideal candidate for this position. Um, I have a, a vested interest in the prosperity long term for the, the all of the schools within Kingston 
Um, and that is why I'm running for the, the regional school committee seat. Um, you know, I ask if, um, you know, if it is myself that you vote for or another one of the qualified candidates on April 23rd uh, to just please go out and vote. Uh, just make sure that your voices are heard and, and make sure that we have all of the right people and um, you know, those who are passionate about the school in those seats. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for participating in this interview. We wish you the best of luck throughout your campaign and in the election. Thank you. For our viewers, thank you for joining us. If you're interested in watching replays of this interview, please visit our website, pactv.org slash elections, for replay times and online viewing options, including PACTV's on-demand and streaming service, PACTV Prime. And please make your choices heard by voting in the election on Saturday, April 23rd. Thank you and good day.